Welcome to the Tastytrade web browser platform overview demonstration. Today we're going to be going over the brand new Tastytrade web platform hosted on my.tastytrade.com. Please note that the legacy web platform hosted on trade.tastytrade.com will continue to be live for the time being. When you first open up the new web browser trading platform, you may be presented with a screen. It's going to ask you if you want to default to the dashboard when you first log in or default to the trading platform. So right now we're taking a look at the web platform dashboard, but if you wanted to have the trading platform open right when you sign in, you can have that set too. At any time, you can go back and change that in your settings as well. But for now, let's just go into the dashboard. So our web dashboard is a great place to start when you first sign in because it gives you a little market snapshot and also a quick overview of your accounts. At the top of our dashboard, we're going to get a quick market snapshot of the S&P 500 updated every 10 minutes. That orange line right here, that's going to represent the most recent tick. To the right of that is our account overview. At the top, we have our account selector where we can select different accounts. In this case, we're looking at our account ending in 01. And below that, we're gonna get a historical net liquidating value graph. So in this case, at 1M, we're looking at our net liquidating value in this account over the past month. We can change this all the way up to one year. So we're looking at our net lick over a year period and then also one day. Below that, we're gonna get balances on our account like net liquidating value or our current net liquidating value. Also profit and loss information and our account buying power too. As you select between different accounts, the information below will update to the account you have selected. Below this, you're gonna get a general news section. This is news across all industries that you can refresh by clicking on the refresh button right here. And then if we keep scrolling down, we have some useful watch lists with symbols that have earnings coming up. We have some high performing dividend underlyings and then also some quite volatile underlyings too under fast movers. We have descriptions in our help center if you wanna learn more on that later. Now that we've gone over our dashboard, we can either go into our trading platform or we can go into our manage section if we wanted to look to maybe fund our account, make a transfer or change something on our profile. For right now, let's just go into trading first and go over the trading platform. Once you're in the trading platform, you're gonna notice that the new web platform closely resembles the experience you have on our desktop trading platform. On the left side, we have our navigation tab and in the bottom left if you click on this arrow right here that's going to e expand this left side panel as well so now you can see the names of each of our tabs to the right of that is our left hand watch list this is a collapsible watch list that you can collapse by clicking on this arrow here in the right side and that will collapse our watch list at any point we could expand our watch list again by clicking on the arrow here you can go through curated watch lists as well as your own created watch list too. In the middle, we are going to have our symbol search where we can set our platform's active symbol. And then we also have our active symbol header below. Underneath is kind of the meat and potatoes of the platform, our primary window. Right now we're on the positions tab, but as you're clicking through the navigation bar, this middle primary window will update based on the tab you have selected on the left. On the right side is our right side panel. This is also a collapsible window that you can collapse by clicking the arrow in the bottom right corner of the window. That's going to collapse the window. If we wanted to expand it again, we can click on this arrow here and then click on any of the tabs here to get the information. So if we wanted to see maybe news on a specific symbol, in this case, Ford is our active symbol, we can see news on our active symbol here on the right side panel. For now, let's just go ahead and collapse that window. Let's go over the positions tab. So our positions tab is where we're gonna kind of keep track of our open positions. We're going to see any working orders. And then this is also where we're going to attend to our positions, maybe make any adjustments, make any rolls, or look to close positions as well. We'll go over more on the positions tab soon, 
But first, let's go over how you can place a stock order. Placing a stock order is as simple as finding the bid and ask anywhere on the platform. Right now, at the top of our platform, our active symbol is on Ford, which is F. We can see the IV rank on that symbol, the last price, the change in price, and then also the bid and ask. The bid and ask here are actually buttons. If you click on the bid, you're going to be shorting shares. If you click on the ask, you're going to go long shares. In this case, let's buy some shares in Ford. And we can click on the ask price here at the top of the platform. When you do that, you're going to be taken to the trade tab under single mode. While in this mode, you're going to get a small chart for the symbol at the top of the screen that you can adjust at any time. And then also at the bottom, you're going to have your stock order ticket. You're going to be able to see that you're buying shares right now. You could switch that to a sell order if you wanted to. And then also you're going to see the quantity of shares you're purchasing. So right now we have one. If we wanted to go up to two, we could use the arrows here. Or if we wanted to go up to five, we could type it in two with our keyboard. We can also select our order type. In this case, we'll send a limit order. And then also our time and force, which we can set as a good till cancel. Underneath that is our order price. And then also under our order price, we'll have the market for the underlying right now, the bid and ask spread for Ford. If you're good with your order and ready to send, click on review and send for a confirmation screen. Once in this screen, we can select which account we want to place this trade in. So we have our default account set at the purple account ending in 01, but we could switch this to our other account at any time by clicking on this drop down. To the right of that, we're going to get a breakdown on our trade. We can see that we're purchasing five shares in Ford. We see our account stock buying power, its options buying power, the market for the underlying, the type of order and its price, the time in force, the estimated trade cost, the commission and fee breakdown, and also the amount of buying power being held up if we place this order. Right now we have a little error message at the bottom because the market's closed, but we can go ahead and send this order if we want and have it working the next market session. If we wanted to go back and edit this order at any time, we can click on edit here at the bottom of the screen, and then we can change our price, what kind of order type we're placing, or if we're set, we can go ahead and click on submit. Once you've sent your order, you can see this working order either in your positions tab or activity tab. In this case, let's go back to the positions tab that we were talking about earlier. Now that we're in our positions tab, we can see the order that we just placed on Ford. We can see it was in that purple account there, and we can see the price that we placed it at and where it's trading at right now. If we wanted to cancel this order at any time, we can left click or right click and then click cancel in this quick action menu. You can also look to replace the order if you want by clicking on replace. Let's do that. If we wanted to change our order price, maybe send it at 1130 instead, we can change our order price, go to review and send. We see that our price in the order ticket is changed and then we can click on submit. Now we're out of our old order and we have a new working order on Ford in our positions tab. We can also view this working order in our activity tab here. If we click on activity in our navigation bar, we'll be taken to our activity tab. Now we can see our working order on Ford. We can right click on that order and cancel and replace it anytime and also choose to do a similar order or opposite order. What's nice is if we open up our right side panel, you can also look at the positions tab and activity tab as well on our right side. So maybe if you have a chart up or another window, you can also view your working orders on the right side panel as well. Now that we've placed a stock trade, let's go into an options trade. So if we go back to the trade tab, we click on our trade tab right here. We're back in our single stock trading mode. If we wanted to place an options trade on Ford, all we have to do is click on asset type options. And now we're going to be taken to the options window. So here you're going to see all the expirations for options in Ford right now. We also have our trade mode, which is set at table right now. We could set it at curve if we wanted to, but we'll keep it at table for now. 
If we wanted to set up a trade, either we can go ahead and expand the expiration we wanna trade. So maybe if we're looking at a certain date or amount of days until expiration, we can see, oh, okay, July 21st, 2023 is 58 days until expiration. We can click on that row and now we're gonna see all the strikes for the July 21st, 58 days out expiration. In the top right as well, it's important to note that we're gonna see the implied volatility as well as expected move for this expiration. So you'll see that baked in soon. We can either set up a trade if you're just starting out, you can use the strategy selector tool here at the top. Maybe if we wanted to place a strangle on an underlying, we could do that by either selecting long or short here. You can toggle long and short by clicking on the button here. Same if you're doing verticals, if you want to go between a put vertical versus a call vertical, you can click to toggle between. And then once you're ready to set up that order, you can click on the strategy name. So in this case, a short strangle, we'll click on the strategy name. And now we have a default order for a strangle on this expiration. If we wanted to edit this order at all, we can drag and drop our legs to adjust which strikes we wanna place the order at. And we can do that too in the order ticket. We can either mess around with the strike height. We can either go up in price, we can go down. We can widen out the spread if we wanted to. We could also change the quantity if we wanted to place two strangles instead of one. And then also if we wanted to change the expiration really quickly, we can go back in expiration or we can go forward in expiration as well. So very quick tools. And then also we have a swap tool if we want to invert this trade. Any actions that you want to undo or redo to, we have undo and redo buttons in the top right. As we are setting up a trade here, you're gonna see the strike prices for each of the strikes on this expiration. And then you're also gonna see the bid and ask price for each strike. To the right and left of the bid and ask are gonna be some additional columns that you can edit. You can either click on the column header here and change it to a different column or leave them as is. In this case, we can set delta and theta and that'll mirror on either sides. Depending on your screen's resolution, you might have more columns. The bigger your screen, the more information you're gonna have. Now that we've set those columns and we like our strikes, we can also look at some information in the trade tab. We can see, okay, on our left are calls, on our right are puts. What's going on in the middle here? Well, this little red dot is indicating the last price so that in that case for Ford is $11.33. And then we also are gonna see the expected move. So that number 0 0.97 in the top right is shown as this orange highlight here at the bottom. So if we wanted to set up our strangle to be within that expected move, we could set up our strikes right outside of that expected move highlight. We're also gonna see our profit and loss zone for this trade on the left side of the bar. So the red area shows where we'll be at a loss at expiration. Green, we're getting a profit as well. So you can get a, a small snapshot of your profit and loss zones or your break even points on your trade. If you wanna go into a different view, maybe a horizontal view, you can change the trade mode to curve mode instead. So earlier we were looking at the table mode, now we're in curve mode, and it should update here really quickly, there we go. Once you have your leg selected, you're gonna see a horizontal view. This is, once again, kind of a, maybe a little bit better view of getting your break-even points on this trade. You see the expected move in the middle and that last price marker as well. You can trade in either modes and adjust your order based on your criteria. As you're adjusting your order as well, Notice the bottom of the screen is updating based on your order parameters. So the price is updating, our Greeks are updating, same with probability of profit. It's all gonna be based on how you're adjusting your trade at the top. We're also gonna see our max profit and our max loss on the trade and how much buying power is being held up. If we adjust the trade, maybe widen out a lot more, we're gonna get a little bit less profit and our max loss is still infinite because it's a strangle. In the order ticket, we're gonna see that we are actually placing two right now. So maybe we wanna go back down to one strangle. We're gonna see the legs that we have selected. So right now we have the 19 put. We also have the 14 call. So we're selling both of those. STO stands for sell to open. 
And then we also have our order type. This is a net credit because we're selling to open and then our time and force. So we can set this as a day and it'll work the next session or we can set it as good till canceled. We have our order price and again, the bid and ask spread for this spread. If we're ready to send the order, we can click on review and send and we're gonna get a breakdown just like our stock order ticket on the trade we're placing, the account we're placing it in, and then also any commissions and fees and buying power that's gonna be held up when we place the trade. If we wanted to edit, we can click on edit and go back, or we can click on submit and send the order. We can see that working order is populated in the top left. We can also see on our right side now that we have that working order in Ford. Now that we've placed an options trade, let's go over our remaining tabs. So we've gone over our activity tab. Below that is our middle watch list tab. So here we're going to get our primary watch list where we can either create a watch list if we wanted to. You can do so by clicking on the plus here in the top right, creating a name. Let's do demo web and then adding some securities you want to add. So maybe some recent symbols we had, TSM, Ford, maybe XOP. We can add those three into our watch list and then click save. And now we have our own curated watch list. If we wanted to add more symbols to that, we can search it in here. Maybe we want to add spy to our list. We can type that in, press enter, and then click on the little button here on the right. Now we have spy in our watch list as well. You can change the columns in here in the platform settings or you can filter these columns as well, either by earnings, IV rank, and then also liquidity rating too. If you wanna do it in ascending or descending order too, you can do it either by symbol in alphabetical order, by clicking on the header here, or you could do last price. You could also filter by IV rank here in ascending or descending order by just clicking on the header on the watch list tab. Next, let's go over the history tab. So the history tab is going to give us a breakdown on the transactions in our account, varying from trades, deposit withdrawals, any transfers, assignments, exercises, dividends, any kind of fees, all that jazz is going to be in our history tab. We can filter by our account. We can do it by symbol, the type of transaction, and also a date range. In this case, we can see the trade that we placed earlier today on TSM. If we wanted to get a breakdown on, hey, what was my profit or loss on that trade? You can click both legs here or all the legs that you want to add up. And you see in the amount totals in the top right, we lost about 35 cents on that trade. Let's get a breakdown on our commissions and fees too. In the top of that window too, you can see year to date, and this is a breakdown of your profit or loss realized and unrealized over the year for each symbol that you've traded. You can also see your commissions and fees over the entire year and your P&L with those commissions and fees baked in in the far right column. Next, our research tab, which is relatively new, is a fantastic tab for information on your active symbols. So again, we're looking at Ford Motors. We can see Recent financials, either on a quarterly or annual basis, we can see income statement, we can see its balance sheet. We could go into the ratios tab and check out all the applicable ratios for this company as well. Maybe if you're you know, into a little fundamental analysis, this is great information. We also have a little forecast section where you can see based on some analyst consensus, what kind of projection are we looking like for this certain kind of underlying? We also have news for the specific underlying in this tab here and an about section. So if you want to get a description of the company, what kind of sector it's in. Uh, also, you can check out, hey, what are the officers here? Who's the CEO? Um, who's in charge? Get some great information. Also a little financial summary of uh, where the financials have been at over the past year or so. So great information, great research in the research tab. Underneath the research tab is the Tasty Live tab where you're gonna see the Tasty Live live stream. Underneath that, we have our chart tab. So for those of you that use the desktop platform, this is a little bit of a different experience. Uh, the chart package is definitely a little bit different than our desktop in that our drawing tools are gonna be all on the left side here. So if we wanted to say do a trend line, you can click on the trend line button in the top click on two points and now you have a trend line. 
If you wanted to move it around, you can click and drag and move it around, or you can lock it in place by clicking on the lock here at the top. You can change the color if you wanted to. Um, also, you can change the width or if you want it dashed. And then if you want to delete it entirely, you can click on delete. Uh, if you double click on any drawing as well, you're going to get some more in-depth parameters, especially for some of the more complex drawings like a Fibonacci retracement or something like that. You might want to go into the parameters and change the different settings for that drawing. So you can set all these other drawings. You can scroll your mouse wheel up and down to see the different drawings available. You can also hide drawings in these settings in the bottom and mess around with the aggregation and time. So if we wanted to look at a daily chart, we're not going to have a period here because based on your mouse scroll or how zoomed in you are on the chart, zoomed in or zoomed out, you will see more dates. So we can go out to, you know, a couple year time frame, or we can look at, you know, day ticks over a monthly period as well. At the top, you can also change the chart type. And then we can also compare to other symbols. So if we wanted to compare to the S&P 500, for example, we could type in SPY and click on that. And now we can get a small line comparing the price of the two symbols over the time period that we have on our chart. We can also add studies and drawings to our chart at any time here. And there are some other additional features that are still getting fleshed out that will get added in future updates. Next, we'll lastly go over the follow feed. So the follow feed here is where you can keep track of your favorite tasty live talent, keep track of their trades and filter by symbol, date range, and the strategy type. Now that we've gone over the trading platform, let's go over the account management section. If we click on manage at the top of the platform, we're going to be taken to our account management window. Here, to start in your summary section, you're going to be able to either open new accounts or you're going to see your current open accounts listed below. You'll also find under my accounts, you can look at your confirmations and statements. You can go to my money to make any kind of transfers like deposits, withdrawals, or internal transfers. Also, account transfers from another broker. And then at the bottom under my profile, you can look at your investor profile, your security settings, your communication preferences, any document downloads, as well as dividend reinvesting. And that wraps it up, folks. Again, this is the Tasty Trade web browser platform that's hosted at my.tastytrade.com. Feel free to reach out to our support team as always if you have any questions or concerns, and feedback is appreciated.